Hello, welcome to Mini Bites. I hope you're having an awesome week. This is week three, part two of righteousness. Going through Romans chapters one through four, we are on Romans chapter two. So if you have your Bibles, please turn there. And we're going to talk about those who are accounted as righteous or declared as righteous. So who is that? We're going to find out. So uh, let's start reading. Romans chapter 2, verse 1 says, You therefore have no excuse, you who pass judgment on someone else. For at whatever point you judge the other, you are condemning yourself because you pass judgment. You who pass judgment do the same things. Part 1, we talked about judgment. Verse 2. Now we know that God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth. So when you, a mere man, pass judgment on them and yet do the same things, do you think you will escape God's judgment? Or do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness, tolerance, and patience, not realizing that God's kindness leads you towards repentance? But because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath when his righteous judgment will be revealed. God will give to each person according to what he has done. To those who by persistence in doing good seek glory, honor, and immortality, he will give eternal life. But for those who seek, who are self-seeking and who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and anger. There will be trouble and distress for every human being who does evil, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace for everyone who does good, uh, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. Verse 11, for God does not show favoritism. All who sin apart from the law will also perish apart from the law, and all who sin under the law will be judged by the law. For it is not those who hear the law who are righteous in God's sight, but it is those who obey the law who will be declared righteous. <clears throat> so there's a story of an old man who lives in eastern Kentucky with his grandson. And the grandson really looks up to his, his grandfather and just wants to be like him, wants to do everything like him. And, and they, they live alone, just the two of them. And so uh, the grandfather every, every morning gets up and, and reads his, his old worn out Bible and gets on the kitchen table and, and reads it. And um, so, so the grandson does the same thing because he wants to be just like his, grand, his grandfather. And so, he he gets his his Bible out and and he tries to be just like his grandfather and um, one day as his 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 grandfather is putting coal in, in into the stove the grandson is trying to read his Bible at the kitchen table and is just really having a hard time and so he says Grandpa I just don't understand the Bible. I want to be just like you, and I see you reading your Bible all the time, but I don't understand it. The, I, I don't understand most of it, and the things that I, I, I do understand, I find that when I close it, I, I forget the things that I do understand, and most of it I don't understand. It just, I, I just, it just seems useless to me. And so the, the grandfather just kind of shakes his hand, his head, and and uh, he gives him the 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 coal basket that he was putting uh, coal in the stove with, and he tells him to go down to the stream and and get a basket full of water for him. So the the grandson says okay, and so he goes down to the stream and he attempts to to get a basket full of water, and 
as he's coming back, he realizes that all of the water starts to get out. So he goes back and gets water. And he, he runs as fast as he can with all the water coming out. And he get, comes back, he goes, Grandpa, I tried to come, but but all the water went out. And, and so the, the grandfather laughs at him and, and he says, you didn't, you didn't run fast enough, son. Go back and get me some more water. And so the, the grandson goes and he dips it back in the stream and he gets the water. And this time he... He tries to cup the basket with with his with his hands to try to keep as much water in the basket as he can, and and he's gingerly walking like this with the basket. And by the time he comes back, sure enough, all the water goes out of the basket, and and the grandfather again laughs. He goes, "Son, I, I wanted a basket full of water. Go back and get me some more. You need to be faster. You need to run as fast as you can to come back." And so, so this time he he thought, well. Maybe if I run as fast as I can, that that I can I can get more. And so he, he goes and he gets in there and he gets the water and he's starting to run and he realizes that's not going to work. And so he goes to the barn and gets a bucket and he gets the bucket and he gets a bucket full of water and he comes back and gives it to the grandfather. And the grandfather says, no, son, I didn't want a bucket full of water. I wanted a basket full of water. So he went back and he tried to get the basket full of water again. And he comes back and he says, Grandfather, look at it. It's a basket. There's no way. It's I just can't. It's it's impossible to get water to bring it back all the way from the stream. It just the water just keeps coming out of it. it it's useless to try to get water to come back from the stream. And he says, "Useless, huh? Look at the basket." And for the first time, he looked at the basket and. Instead of a dirty, filthy coal basket, now this basket was completely clean. He didn't notice it before. He said, that's what it's like when you're reading the Bible. He says, you may not understand all of it. You may not remember all of it. But the Bible, as you're reading it, son, it's going to transform you from the inside out. And you do your best to try to understand it, but it's transforming you as you're reading it. So I tell that story to illustrate the point that in verse 13 says, for it is not those who hear the law who are righteous in God's sight, but it is those who obey the law who will be declared righteous. So it's not the hearers who are righteous, but those who obey. Sometimes we get caught up in, it's all about completely understanding. Now, now hear me, I'm a teacher. I, I feel like we should understand. Um, there shouldn't be an excuse for not understanding to the best of our ability. We're never going to completely understand. We're not God. We're finite beings. He's infinite. We should strive to understand. We should strive to handle the truth um, to the best of our ability. But we can't just be hearers only. We should allow it to transform us. We should allow it to clean us. And more than that, it can't just sit here. It's got to transform us. We've got to obey it. We've got to do what it says. That's who he says will be declared righteous. Not those who know it, not those who can recite it. James 1.22, James, the apostle James says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. So what happens if we only listen to the word? We're deceived. If we're only listening, we're deceived. If, can I just be completely honest? Can I just be completely frank? If you're only listening to these mini bites, if you're only coming to church and listening, if I'm only studying to teach, then I'm deceived. Then you're deceived. Then we're just deceived. Deception is this. It's I'm right, I'm good, 
nothing needs to change. That's deception. I heard it said that you know you're deceived when you think you're undeceivable. If undeceivable is a word. You know you're deceived when you know that you can't be deceived. We all can be deceived. And so we are deceived if we're only hearers and we're not doers of the word. If, we're, if we only say, yeah, that's good, amen, we're actually not doing it. If we're not applying it to our lives, if we're not doing this, if we're only doing this, then we're deceived. John 8, 31 through 32, Jesus said this. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him. So those who believed in him, those who were disciples. Now, disciples, again, are, are Christ followers in varying forms. If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So if we stay in his word, abide, if we live, if we dwell, if we stay, if we're connected, if we act upon his word, then we're truly his disciples. We're learning. And this truth will set us free. Why are we not free? Because we're not living here. We're not staying here. We know of it, but we're letting that water seep from our basket. We're not being set free because maybe we're just letting it be head knowledge. We're thinking, yep, I heard it. Yep, that was point A. I'm on to point B. It is not those who hear the law who are righteous in God's sight. It is those who obey the law who will be declared righteous in right standing with God. John 14, 21. Those who accept my commandments, Jesus speaking, and obey them. Not just accept them like, yep, that's you, Jesus. That's you. I believe you. I believe that those are your commandments. But accept them and obey them are the ones who love me. Whoa, 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 Jesus. No, 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 no. You can't doubt my love. Oh, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, no, 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 no. Don't doubt my love. If you don't obey him, if I don't obey him, I don't really love him. Not like that. Not like he demands. And because they love me, my father will love them. And I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. Oh. Do you know how many times I have prayed, reveal yourself to me? Or have heard others pray something similar? I want to see you, Jesus. Reveal yourself to me. And he says why he'll do it, how he'll do it, when he'll do it. Right here. It's about obedience. And it's connected with his word. John 12, 47 through 50. If anyone hears my words, but does not keep them, 
I do not judge that person, Jesus is saying. If anyone hears my words but does not keep them, I do not judge them. For I did not come to judge the world but to save the world. There is a judge for the one who rejects me and does not accept my words. The very words I have spoken will condemn them. If this is true, and it's true because Jesus said it, isn't that a good reason to know his words? If the very words that he spoke will condemn us, wouldn't it behoove us to know the words that he spoke to us just by themselves? Isn't that a good enough reason? But another good reason is these words will condemn us. I think that's a pretty good reason to know them as well. Don't you? The very words I've spoken will condemn them at the last day. For I did not speak on my own, but the Father who sent me commanded me to say all that I have spoken. I know that his command leads to eternal life. So whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. This is his word. So again, it's not the hearers who are righteous, but those who obey. Read it one more time. Romans 2, 13. For it is not those who hear the law. The law, let's not get caught up on, this is the law of Moses. It's the law of the, of the Old Testament. I believe we absolutely can um, superimpose or, or uh, transfer um, the law of God in, in here, that it's, it's his words. For it is, it is not those who hear the law who are righteous in God's sight, but it is those who obey the law of God who will be declared righteous. We've got to act upon what God says. We've got to be obedient. Thank you.